I think he has a target of 33,000 on the Sensex. Budgets over. All eyes now on the budget session. A landmark day on the Lal Street as the Bulls remain in cruise control. The Nifty hits 9,000 and the Sensex gains over 100 points. The mid-caps continue to outperform. The Lok Sabha passes the Mines and Minerals making auction the preferred mode to sell all natural resources. The insurance bill and the coal mining bill introduced in the lower house. Meanwhile, a major embarrassment for the centre in Rajya Sabha. Opposition wins a vote to amend the motion thanking the President's address. The Prime Minister extends an olive branch to the opposition over changes to the Land Acquisition Act, admits that the BJP made a mistake by supporting the bill brought by the UPA. Government also vows to try and get the Nokia factory in Chennai up and running once again. 93 farmer suicides in just the last 45 days. The agrarian crisis in Marathwara deepened severe drought, hail storms and faulty government policy pushing farmers into a debt trap in Maharashtra. The economic offences wing of the Mumbai police cracks down on stockbrokers as it probes the NSCL scam. Three top brokers arrested and the police allege they indulged in client code modifications and issued bogus warehouse receipts. Subrata Roy is in danger of losing the Grosvenor House. Bank of China puts the iconic London hotel on sale after Sahara defaults on its $900 million loan. That's an exclusive. Volvo is also set to strike gold as it prepares to sell part of its stake in Aisha Motor. The 5% stake bought for 157 crore rupees in 2008 could now fetch a whopping 3,500 crore rupees. After dilly-dallying for months, the government finally starts to watch fluctuations in airfares. Aviation regulators sets up a tariff monetary committee as full-fledged regulation. The next step, a special report coming up. Well, that's a sad and shocking reality. 1,109 farmers took their lives last year. The new year has begun and 93 farmers have committed suicide in just the first 45 days of 2015. This is not a statistic from sub-Saharan Africa. This is happening in the Maratwada region in Maharashtra, the state that contributes the most to India's GDP. What's ailing rural India? Government policies inadequate to handle drought and hailstorms. Special reports through this week coming up here on India This Is Our. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us on the show. And there are Achedin still a pipe dream clearly for rural India. And if we you know, look at my special report on Maratwada, it looks like it is going to become and emerge as the drought capital of India. And Shirin, you know those freaky rains that we've been seeing across yeah. the country not going to help either. Absolutely. That special report is coming up in just a bit. But first to the Lal Street where the bulls continue to run strong. It's been a historic day for the equity markets. The bulls are in complete control as the markets rose for the fourth straight session, breaking new ground. For the first time in history, the Nifty hitting the 9,000 mark but ending the day just a few points shy of that level. The Sensex cracking yet another century. It continues its march to about 30,000. The mid cap's not far behind. The mid cap index also hitting new records, surging over 100 points. Anuj joins us now with the day's highlights. Anuj, not a bumper rally, but nevertheless a landmark day, especially for the Nifty. Well, historic day for Indian market. The Nifty hitting 9,000 for first time ever. Didn't manage to close above that, just about 5 points shy of that, but still would go down in record books as the day the Nifty hit 9,000. 
What was interesting today was the stocks that powered the Nifty, Reliance and TCS. And Reliance really was the top contributor after practically not doing anything in this big bull market. Mid-caps continue to outperform in today's trade. Let's talk about some of the stocks then that led the market rally. Three stocks accounted for all the Nifty gains today, in fact. Reliance was up 4%, TCS was up 4% and HDFC was up about 2%. So these three stocks alone accounted for all the Nifty gains. As, aside of that, the market was actually quite flat. PSU banks did well in late trade today. PNB, Bank of Baroda and outside the index stocks like IDBI Bank, they were all surging in trade. Then a couple of pharma stocks also looked good. Stocks like Cipla, Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy's Labs, all these stocks were up in today's trade. Uh, in terms of losing stocks, Mahindra and Mahindra, auto sales in fact have been a bit weak and stocks have been reacting. Access Bank was down 2.5% and there's Tata Motors again from the auto pack down about 1.6%. Access Bank of course seeing some profit booking after a spectacular run over the last two days. In the mid caps, there was one big run in Tata group of stocks. Really big surge, Tata LXI, locked on circuit, Tata Sponge nearly there and Tata Metallics up about 15%. And some more mid-cap gainers in today's trade included stocks like TBS Motor, HCL Infosystems, and PTC India Financial. So 9,000 is done now, and now the countdown will begin to Sensex 30,000. Uh, so our strategy is looking for another 10, 11% from here. I think he has a target of 33,000 on the Sensex. And, and I, I think at 9,000, you are obviously back to the old highs in the Nifty. From here to for it to break out into a new zone would be a very meaningful break. So that probably needs some more fundamental push behind it. Clearly, an RBI rate cut would be that kind of a that kind of a support. Uh, the budget, I think, was medium term very positive. There was no, no fireworks in it right away to get people, and we had already rallied into the budget. So yeah. there's nothing very dramatic in there to say let's bust higher right away. I think they do still need to do another 75 basis points over the course of the year. Uh, the, the, the anticipation in the markets before the budget was that they might do it right after the budget, uh, like in the first week of March. So right. I think, again, there was nothing pressing in this budget to say that mm. they, they need to go push the button right now. Uh, if they want to wait till the first week of April, a month from now, when it's the regular meeting, I think that's perfectly fine. The mood is uh, interestingly cautiously optimistic. Uh, clearly, uh, investors uh, have been very positive, were very positive, uh, but uh, with uh, the earnings acceleration being slower than anticipated, uh, they're clearly looking out for how all this uh, optimism is going to be is going to ultimately translate. Uh, into both uh, earnings growth uh, and, of course, uh, the broader economic recovery. Uh, so it's a wait and watch right now. In fact, I think what we are now seeing investors do is they're saying budget's over. All eyes now on the budget session. In a deflation-oriented environment, we are looking, uh, India is looking uh, extremely attractive. They are focusing on investment-led growth. And look at some of the very innovative, uh, you know, decisions that they've made. Look at this proposal, for example, to launch the National Infrastructure and Investment Fund, where the government will seed that uh, fund with an equity of 20,000 crores. Uh, and that can be leveraged many times over at both the central as well as the state level. Some of the most influential market voices out there with their outlook for the large street. With the budget out of the way, the government is stepping on the gas on its legislative agenda. Today the Lok Sabha passed the Mines and Minerals Act. Not just that, the insurance and coal mining bill have also been introduced in the lower house. With the now joining us to wrap up all of the parliament action. It's a very busy day. That's right. Uh, you know, uh, the big uh, uh, legislation of which got uh, the Lok Sabha not was, of course, the MMDR, uh, new MMDR Act. Uh, and I spoke to the Mines Minister uh, to explain the significance of, of this particular legislation. And he told me that uh, unlike coal, it is the states which will have to get ready to auction the mining blocks. Uh, and uh, the rules regarding that will be framed up by the centre and those will be ready by mid-May. Let's listen to what uh, Mines Minister Narendra Singh Tomar had to say regarding the new MMDR Act. I understand that the response of the auction will be good. If the auction of coal has been done, then the response will be good. If the auction of the major minerals has been done, then 
तो निश्चित रूप से अप्रत्याशित उसका रिस्पांस आएगा लेट्स वॉट नो लेट्स एज्यूम डेट राज्यसभा पास कर लेती है उसके बाद रूल्स फ्रेम होने में और आपको रिलीज करने में कितना टाइम लगेगा क्योंकि काफी सारे कंपनीज दे आर वेटिंग इन साइड लाइन टू सी वॉट काइंड ऑफ रूल्स विल बी फ्रेम मुझे लगता है की ये सारा का सारा काम हम लोग एक मई तक पूरा कर लेंगे बाई लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू सर एंड दिस इज ए पोलिटिकल क्वेश्चन यू हैव पास इट इन लोकसभा लोकसभा में से पास हो गया है राज्यसभा में आपका नंबर्स नहीं है अगर राज्यसभा में पास नहीं हुआ तो क्या ये ज्वाइंट सेशन में जा सकता है ये लेजिस्लेशन मैं ऐसा मानता हूं कि एमएमडीआर अमेंडमेंट बिल ये पारदर्शिता को बढ़ाने वाला है देश की आवश्यकता है तो निश्चित रूप से राज्यसभा भी इसको अनुमोदित करेगी ऐसा मुझे भरोसा है Another piece of legislation which got the Lok Sabha nod was the Motor Vehicles uh, Act uh, in Lok Sabha. Not only that, uh, the government was also able to initiate discussions on the coal mine special provision bill. Last but not the least, uh, the government was also able to introduce the insurance laws amendment bill in Lok Sabha, even though a similar bill is pending in Rajya Sabha. But the big question at the moment is, even though we have seen action in Lok Sabha, will the Rajya Sabha agree to pass all? these bills again and i guess uh, for that we'll have to wait uh, till the next week with that it's back to you well we will have to see if we do see legislative action taking place in rajya sabha but speaking of the government's legislative agenda the finance ministry has decided to take the next step that will lead to the gst being implemented by the 1st of april 2016 it will seek the cabinet's approval to pay state governments the compensation owed on central sales tax sapna joins us now with more details sapna in the first tranche about 11000 crore rupees towards uh, cst compensation what's the road map from then on Well, 11,200 odd crores is as promised by the finance minister. In fact, before he got the state's uh, uh, permission, state's consent on placing the constitutional amendment bill in parliament. So now is the time to actually disburse that money. Most probably, uh, sometime next week, the supplementary demand for grants will come up in the parliament, and this amount uh, will be dispersed to the state governments. Uh, a cabinet nod is also is also likely very shortly on this. Uh, having said that, uh, the interesting point here is that as per the commitment of the finance minister to to pay out CST compensation to state governments. the fi 16 budget already has a provision of 15000 odd crores uh, this is a very good signal on on the cst compensation front because it gives certainty to the state government that the money will be paid out and uh, the center will not be pressurized in terms of going for a supplementary demand for grants which actually pushes up the expenditure beyond the budgeted targets having said that why just the second tranche of cst compensation with third tranche uh, they are planning somewhere around 9 to 10000 crores on that front on that front so this essentially will take care of all the cst compensation due to the state governments for 10 11 11 12 and possibly also 12 13 having said that the other important part uh, uh, that needs to be kept in mind is that uh, in the third week of march uh, the empowered committee of state finance ministers is going to meet uh, to appoint the new chairman uh, now the finance minister on the day of the budget in the press conference had indicated when we had put up this question on what next on the gst front he had said that first the chairman of the ec council has to be this has to be uh, selected after which uh, we will also uh, go in for another uh, round a small round of talks uh, with the state fm panel before i go and push the constitutional amendment bill for gst in the parliament so this is how the sequence of events is going to uh, is going to pan out first the cst compensation then the election of the uh, ec uh, of the ec panel the chairman of the ec panel most likely in the front runners uh, there is talk of the kerala finance minister there is also talk of uh, the gujarat finance minister and possibly also the punjab uh, finance minister any one of any one among the three may be elected by the third week of march the cst composition is just one part there is a big task is going to be of course to try and get all the back end in place to have the goods and services tax rolled out by 1st april 2016 thanks so much sapna for joining us with that Now, the prime minister today spoke in the rajya sabha in a motion to thank the president for his joint address he reached out to the opposition over the proposed changes to the land acquisition bill prime minister admitted the bjp had made a mistake by endorsing the bill when the upa government had tabled it but then called upon the opposition to pass it as compensation was not being touched and only weak is were being corrected for all of this not before taking a dig or two at the congress party upa upa ke samay ki main baat karta hu per day 7.4 km ka highway ka award hote the aur 5.2 km per day achieve hota tha 
हमारे नौ महीने का हिसाब दे रहा हूं जी आनंद जी हम पर डे 18 किलोमीटर का अवार्ड देते हैं और अब तक का रिपोर्ट है 10.1 किलोमीटर पर डे हम डबल काम कैसे चलता है सरकार नीचे जमीन पर कैसे दौड़ती है किसानों के खिलाफ कोई भी बात हो मैंने डे वन से कहा है हम करेक्ट करने के लिए तैयार हैं लेकिन जो हुआ है उसमें कमियां हैं क्योंकि वो करने वाले में हम भी थे हम ये मना नहीं करते कि हमने नहीं किया है अगर अच्छा है तो हमें क्रेडिट मत दो लेकिन पाप है तो कुछ पाप का भागीदारी हमारी भी है लेकिन अब हमें उसमें से बाहर आना चाहिए देश हित के लिए आना चाहिए विकास के लिए आना चाहिए और इसको मैं इसको अहंकार का और राजनीति का पहलू बनाना नहीं चाहता The Prime Minister is say, there saying his government has achieved construction of 10.1 kilometers of highway every day, almost double of what the UPA government had achieved. The Prime Minister also spoke about the Nokia plant that had been shut down in Chennai, blaming the UPA for that fiasco. Modi said the government will try its best to get the plant up and running once again. Nokia की जो फैक्ट्री बंद हो गई है, इस सरकार के कारण नहीं हुई है, पिछली सरकार के कामों के कारण उसका परिणाम हुआ है। आपकी चिंता सही है 25,000 लोग वहां बेरोजगार हो गए हैं लेकिन मैं आपको विश्वास दिलाता हूं कि हमने एक दिशा में प्रयास शुरू किया है और उस प्रयास का परिणाम होगा कि आने वाले दिनों में नोकिया फिर से शुरू हो और लोगों को रोजगार मिले well, as the Prime Minister giving credence to the reports that have been doing the rounds over the last couple of days on the possibility of a deal being struck, a buyer being found for the Nokia facility in Chennai. Now, soon after the Prime Minister's speech, the government faced an embarrassment in the Rajya Sabha. The opposition moving an amendment to the motion of thanks to the President's address. The left parties moved an amendment saying the government's motion did not have any mention about its failure to bring back black money. The BJP vociferously opposing the amendment, but the Speaker allowed it and put it up for vote. The government lost the vote and the amendment was adopted. This is the fourth time in the Rajya Sabha's history an amendment moved by the opposition on the motion of thanks to the President has been passed. The last time was in 2001 when Vajpayee led the NDA government. And speaking of black money, it's not laws but implementation that's the problem. And that's the word coming in from Shakti Kantadas, the Revenue Secretary. Speaking today, he also said that the budget has taken the right steps to curb black money. Remember, uh, what the budget has decided to do is being seen as possibly an amnesty scheme. The government would like to say that they're giving people an opportunity for compliance. Listen in. There are sufficient provisions to deal with the problem of domestic black money. It's a question of enforcement. And in enforcement, the machinery has been tightened. The income tax department this year has probably launched the highest number of prosecutions in its history. We have done raid which have rates which have yielded the highest cash in the history of the department and the rates are not arbitrarily planned. It follows weeks and months of very detailed research, very detailed analysis. Well, the chase for black money continues. Now, the agrarian crisis in the arid Maratwada region of Maharashtra is deepening. As many as 93 farmers' suicides have been reported since the 1st of January this year. Successive droughts, the hailstorm last year, and faulty agriculture policy contributing to the crisis. Smith and I and Raskina gets you this special ground report in our new series, What's Ailing Rural India? Last month, 40-year-old Sham Rao Rambhav Parde, owning less than an acre of land in Shirat Chahapur in Hingoli district of Maharashtra and reeling under the weight of debt, committed suicide by consuming poison. Sham Rao is part of a shocking statistic. Maratwada has seen 93 farmer suicides in the first 45 days of 2015. Begging the question, is Maratwada replacing Vidharb as the farmer's suicide capital. After two successive years of drought came the hailstorm in February last. Maratwada was the epicenter of that calamity. The acute agrarian crisis has been building since. The region reported 565 suicides in 2014. Everything was destroyed. Soya bean, wheat, 
I did not even get a rupee from the government. We lost all our crops. Tell me how do we live? Experts point to a faulty agriculture policy with traditional crops not bringing them suitable price in the market. In recent years, a large number of farmers have opted for water-intensive orchards and perennial crops like sugarcane, grapes and banana. This despite Maratwara being an arid region. Orchard farming is capital intensive and so farmers incur large debt. There is a long waiting period for the yield, sometimes taking years for the investment to pay off. Sometimes too long. Compounding their crisis, the crores of rupees of relief packages announced both after the successive droughts as also the hailstorm either didn't always reach the intended beneficiaries or took far too long. In Mumbai, Smitha Nair. Well, that's the shattered, sad and shocking reality. 93 farmers committing suicide already in 2015 in the Maratwara region. So the Nifty has scaled 9,000. FIs are looking at India with renewed vigor. And the Make in India initiative is India in cheering. But deep in the hinterland, it's a completely different story. In rural India, unseasonal rainfall threatens to deal a crippling blow to an economy that's already reeling from persistently sluggish demand. Take a look. These are India's hinterlands. The agrarian economy here directly supports the livelihood of 70% of India's population. And for these people, the promise of Achedin is still just hearsay. Incomes are low, debt levels are high, demand is down and the threat of continued stress is through the roof. According to Crystal Research, the first 10 months of FY15 saw rural wages grow at just 6.6%, a sharp reduction from the 20% growth seen in 2011. That's because the factors that determine rural income have suffered a setback. Disbursements under the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme have been erratic and the growth in minimum support prices for agricultural produce has been falling. For instance, Crystal Research says MSPs have grown just 5-6% to in FY15 against FY14's growth rate of 12-13%. to This lower income has hit purchasing power in the region. Tractor sales offer a clear window into this reality. February saw M&M's domestic tractor sales plunge 38% year-on-year, while Escort saw sales fall 27%. If that's not enough, the unseasonal rainfall that has hit Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat and Rajasthan has damaged the rabi crop, meaning there's less produce to sell, so less money to be made, and hence less purchasing power. It will have a multiplier effect on the economy, or a cascading effect on the other sectors. Uh, like, for example, if... Uh, uh, if once the uh, harvest comes, there is the money in the pa pocket of the farmers, which is spent on the consumer durables or uh, FMCG goods. Uh, those industries will also get hit. Clearly, all's not well in rural India. And while Budget 2015 may have proposed a whole host of initiatives to improve the lives of farmers, these are not overnight cures. So what they really have to look forward to over the next few months are lower incomes, meaning the overall Indian economy should brace for a severe drop in economic boosters from that section of India. A Bureau report. And over the course of the next few days, we will be telling you how rural India is faring and how it's getting crippled by the freaky rains that we have been seeing. The scam that crippled the National Sport Exchange has just taken on even larger proportions. The economic offences wing of the Mumbai police has learned to have cracked the whip on some of the exchange's top brokers for their alleged involvement in that scam. Prina Parwana joining us with those details. Prina, we understand three brokers have been arrested. Who are these brokers? What's the investigative agency's thought process? Well, that's right, you know, three brokers have been arrested today by the Mumbai UOW, Amit Rathi of uh, Anand Rathi Securities, and also the vice president of IFL has been arrested. And apart from that, also CP Krishnan, who is the whole time director uh, of Geojit uh, Com Trade, has been arrested. Now, the allegations, let me run across the allegations that have been leveled against these top brokers, including that the brokers indulged in circular trading and also acted as CNF agents. And not only this, they enticed the uh, NSL investors 
of assured returns and safe returns as well. But most importantly, what EOW says that during the course of investigation over the last one year, they found out that there was a large scale, uh, uh, you know, client code modification. In fact, in one such instance, uh, one of the brokers, you know, uh, conducted uh, trades worth of over 1,000 crore rupees using one client code without informing the clients. So these are the mass, you know, rampant, uh, you know, charges that has been leveled against brokers. And of course, the three brokers uh, who has been uh, arrested will be produced before the MPID court uh, uh, tomorrow for custody. Back to you. All right, Prerna, thanks very much for joining us. The economic offences wing is not stopped just with those three arrests that Prerna was talking about. We also learned that it has directed financial technologies to refrain from using the company's funds for any purpose other than for the payment of statutory dues as well as wages. FTI will need the EOW's permission before using these funds for any third-party transaction. In addition, FTI will have to earmark 84 crore rupees on account of royalty fee received from NSCL. Well, on that note, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of India Business Hour. Remember, it's a big day tomorrow. The coal auction resumes and the spectrum auction kicks off. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 for all the action. From all of us here, goodbye. Thanks for watching.